Well, welcome everybody to our very first Star Sports Greyhound Derby Zoom room for 2021. I'm uh, pleased to say I'm joined by a brilliant panel, Ian Fortune, Irish broadcaster, Dave Mullins, top trainer here in England, of course, uh, Lofty. Martin Chapman is here from Star Sports, who's uh, in charge of all the betting, and also Nathan Corden, who is now consultant at Toaster. I should just let all you viewers know as well that you can watch all the Greyhound Derby action on the Star Sports Bet website and the app as well, and all Greyhound racing for that matter so do make sure you check that out and our brilliant new uh, website that we've got for this year's derby as well we're going to have lots of news views and videos and blogs and uh, all interesting things so do have a look right so let's get some early thoughts on this year's derby I'm going to come to you first Lofty because I'm really not impressed with the best thing that you've put up for this year not enough English dogs in there for my liking I think in the uh, top 11 in the betting we've got three English dogs we've not been trying our bet We've been trying our best, Jules. Obviously, David with with Tempin. Uh, you know, he looked the world beater last year when he was um, flying. The form at uh, Romford looked superb. I mean, he's uh, had a couple of defeats since, but he's a dog that the English dogs. He's going to be you know the ones we've beaten. But we're just trying to find English dogs there at the moment. It's just Jim Star elusive. Was very impressive in his first couple of runs at Nottingham. Don't forget the Derby's now not at Nottingham, so it's okay. Sound he, he was flying around there. He's been very, very injury prone, I think, Jim Star Elusive as well. So trying to keep him sound. Although we have laid the owners a, a decent bet on that. So, uh, you know, the dog is um, definitely coming back. A decent trial, I think, last night at Nottingham. I think good night 17.65 last night in Nottingham over the over the two-bend sprint trip there. So he's certainly a dog with speed, but trying to keep him sound for six rounds of a derby for a dog who's had a, almost a thought of career-ended injury. You know, and then we're... We're struggling for dogs. Bocco's belly, I see, who's now got the Graham Holland for the uh, for the Kirby. Whether he'll come back to Patrick for the Derby or not, I'm not entirely sure. Another one, Ian's waving the flag there to Clay for the <laughs> Irish. He's a dog who, I must admit, has impressed me. When he first ran at Toast in the, the Puppy Derby that we sponsored, um, you know, I thought he was he would be a huge lay. He was a wide run around there in Lacti Yard of early pace. They, they took the wide tag off him and, and made him a rail seed around Monmore, which looked an absolute suicide mission. Never seen his first couple of runs at Monmore when he swung off the track at the first bend. But he does seem a bit more of a, a nat well, not a natural railer, but much more of a rails dog now. Interesting to see if he comes back over here, whether Patrick gets him or Graham gets him. He's you know, the strongest of the English. But at the moment, yeah, we're clutching at straws for the English dogs, I'm afraid, Julie. We are a little bit. Certainly uh, the Irish two are the top two in the betting. Um, I, I guess uh, Native Maestro, what we can say, Ian, is he's English owned mm. now, at least. Uh, you've got Knock the Ball Sid up there as well. Uh, the Easter Cup winner, so impressive that night. Now 25 to 1 after some uh, people got their money on pretty quick after the Easter Derby final. And it's 20 to 1 for Native Maestro. I mean, would they be your top two in the betting as far as the Irish dogs are concerned? I'm making the admission I've had one bet in the Derby thus far. I backed Native Maestro. Uh, when I know when I knew that Graham Box had bought him, I said, well, we're guaranteed he'd be in toaster at least. And uh, that's the reason I backed him. I think he's the dog with a, a big profile. Um, I think he'd be suited to toaster. He likes the inside. He's good early speed. You know, I'm not saying that's what you need in toaster, but it certainly will help. Um, there's actually quite a few dogs there. Irish trained that are British owned, you know, like Dear Jet Sydney is a, is a Scot. Um, Doolan Duke is a Scot. Obviously, Kenny Glenn has the two of them. So, you know, you have a few. Simon Taylor is very much an Englishman too, of course, new in uh, session and the likes. So, you know, Graham Holland himself is an Englishman, but <laughs> we've, we've well and truly claimed him. But uh, yeah, listen, it's when you look at the front page, you go, wow, yeah. And then you realise the dogs you're missing from the Irish. You know, there's a lot of young dogs coming through at the moment. Um, a lot of those that are, well, certainly a few of them on the front page will be running in the Kirby Memorial, which kicks off this weekend at Limerick. And I would imagine there'll be a few more stars that will emerge from that. And, and we'll see. Problem is, you don't know who's going to come and who's not going to come. You know, if Liam Dowling comes, all of a sudden our team is probably twice as strong. If he doesn't come, you know, anything can happen. And Toaster itself is the great leveller. You know, it's it's worth pointing out. We didn't win either of the Toaster derbies that have been held thus far. We had Claire's Rocket, who was an absolute flying machine. He just couldn't quite handle the place. And who's to say that any of these dogs will handle the place because none of our dogs have been around before. So that's that's where it happens. And of course, every every year, even last October, the English will, a dog will emerge a week or two before the derby and take off. South, South will Jeff, you know, he's a 50 to one chance with Star Sports. I can't understand that. I, I don't know what the story with him is. He hasn't been seen this year, but... He looked a hell of a dog last year. So I'm not quite counting our chickens now. If I was going to Nottingham, I'd be all in. It's not. It's Toaster. It's a different venue. And it's not so much an Irish type venue. So we'll, uh, we won't just start counting them just yet. 
and that hopefully plays into our hands. Of course, it only takes one dog to win the derby, doesn't it, uh, David Mullins? And Tenpin is a dog that we're very excited about. We have been for a long time. How is he? What's the latest? What can you tell us about him? He's in great order. Um, he, he did pick up a niggle in uh, the Mon at Monmore in the uh, winter derby. It wasn't too serious, but it was enough to keep him off. And I find, you know, with the top end dogs, if they pick up a niggle, um, it, it does get exaggerated in their performance. Um, that said, we're, he's getting looked over tomorrow. Um, we're expecting the all clear. He's been galloping well and he's booked for a trial at Central Park Sunday. Oh, not, not Sunday, Friday. He's having a sprint there. As long as that goes all right, I've booked him a series of trials round Toaster. Leading Which I think to... could be really important for dogs to have a few looks around Toaster and that, that could be certainly a problem for the Irish. How highly do you rate him, David? I mean, I know the answer to this, but just for the, the viewers watching compared to other dogs you've trained. Oh, this, this dog... He's definitely special, you know. There's, he's he's got a demeanour about him, you know. In his, not only in his performance, just the way you handle him. Um, he knows he knows he's a good dog. Um, you know, if, if there's one flaw, it's you know how draw dependent he is, and it's not just where he's drawn; it's how other people see their dogs. You know, I'd, I'd be hoping that Toaster will make sure people see their dogs properly this year, because um, you do get people try and you know, see them rails, they clearly don't want to be rails. Uh, but, I, you know, I might only be protecting my own dog. But, you know, I think a rails pitch round Toaster is going to be a massive advantage if you can get it. You think Toaster will suit him? Um, on the, as long as he gets the rails pitch, I think it will. My, my concerns with Toaster is the run to the corner isn't as long as it, you know, people think it is. It's still a decent run to the corner, but... You know, if it was Nottingham, you know, you've got a massive run to the corner. You've got plenty of time to sort themselves up. You know, you've only got to make a slight mistake and, you know, you can be in the melee there. You think he'll stay, David? I will stay. You'll stay. It's a long way home, Toast. I've noticed, noticed watching the racing there. It's a lot of lot of things, less than Nottingham, where everything was over at the third bend. A lot of things seem to change there on that running at Toast. But it's a hell of a long way home, yeah. it seems to be. Yeah. It is. I mean, I know what you mean. I mean, it's, it's surprising with the long run home at Nottingham, you know, there wasn't much came from behind last year. Um, it is a, it's probably because the bends are tougher. You know, the, you can race the bends around the third and fourth. And, you know, you, it, yeah, he'll get it. David, he, he, excuse me, he looks like a stronger dog this year, you know, from what evidence we've seen. Is that the way you feel? Or do you think he's, it was just, we're making more of a case for it now because we're getting closer to the derby, but he definitely looks a stronger dog. Yeah, he's matured well. I, I think he's um, stronger. I mean, the thing... I think people need to realise when he was racing last year, he was against pups. Although he was a pup himself, you know, he looked head and shoulders above what he was meeting at the time. Um, and coming from that puppy stage into Cat 1, all age, you know, it was, it was a big step. You know, he, he handled it. Um, but I think, you know, once he gets race fit, yeah, he's definitely a stronger dog. And Lofty, you've been going top industry price about 10 pin because you have got a little question mark in your mind about whether or not he'll get the trip. So uh, Hunter's head to Star Sports, basically. Yeah, more of a draw. Uh, David alluded on the draw, and I say I think he could be drawn out in four, maybe at Toaster sometimes. A lot of people, as David alluded to, spot on. People want to see their dogs rouse at a more middle runners, even, you know, and if he gets drawn trap four one day, you think, oh, eyes closed to the corner. So that's probably the top price, yeah, at 33 to 1 money, just purely the draw dependency that we possibly think. But we've been wrong before many a time. So I'm glad he was going to have plenty of looks around Toaster as well. I think that could uh, be a big advantage. Nathan, uh, what do you think of the English versus the Irish challenge? Uh, do you think that we've got the quality of dogs, albeit maybe not the quantity, to uh, put in a, a good challenge? Uh, well, I'm just looking at Ian now, and he's chuckling already about that. I was you know, normally normally this is where he throws in the rugby. It's just been a, it's a bad few days for Nathan in terms of his argument. <laughs> um, look, listen, I, I I think last year at Nottingham, not the bull said really was a standout dog. I know he didn't win in the end, but I think the semi final that night when it absolutely chucked it down with rain probably didn't help him that night. I think he's improved no end. I, you know, he's consistent trapping. He, he won the Kingdom Derby at Tralee uh, in December. He's now won the Easter Cup. I think he'll love Toaster. Um, I, I do think he'll be bang and gone. And it doesn't really matter for him which trap. 
I think he's shown that in, in the Easter Cup from Trap 6. I, th I think he'll be out and gone. I think with Bocco's belly, I think he... I think going to Ireland will, will do him some good. I uh, and None of us know whether he's going to come back to Patrick or stay with Graham yet, um, but uh, we'll claim as as an English runner. I think he's a king lock bray tight, and they do tend to come a little bit later in age, and he'll be two in April. I think, you know, by the derby, by the time derby comes, I think he'll be a much, much stronger runner and will be an interesting one for the derby. But... Uh, Obviously, like like we said, ten pin Southwood Jet for the English. Um, you know the the Roxholme Shake Dog as well. That looks like it's got a bit of early pace as well. That's actually trialing at Toaster on Tuesday night, um, so that will give us a good guide how it is. And you mentioned it's the Kirby Star thing at the weekend, and uh, there's always young dogs that come out of that that we start looking to for the English Derby. But obviously, we're going to get bigger prices about those dogs now. So, can you give us any clues to something that you think might head to Toaster that that we can maybe get on now at a bigger price? Well, the aforementioned Bacco's belly, you know, Ballymac Ariel, um, Ballymac Cash Out is a very interesting one. He's obviously a greyhound with unlimited ability. He did a 2808 trial at Limerick the night, which is sensational running. Um, he was picked up in the Tote Goal Cup final, which was a bit concerning for a dog that had won over 600 yards. I'd say he's a, just a, a bit like Bacco's belly in a sense where he just needs to man up a little, you know, and I, I don't like to use the term, but he just needs to Nathan, everything Nathan said, I agree with. I think the change of scenery and just the change of um, discipline for Bocco's belly will just suit him. And I think it's something similar with Ballymac Cashew. I think he needs just a bit more bother about him and just learn what the game is about. But I think if Ballymac Cashew produces his best form in the coming weeks and he is to travel to Toaster, keep an eye out for him. He's a big price. I think he's 50 to 1 with, um, with, with Lofty and Co. That's a massive price about a greyhound with his ability. Um, the problem is there's a big asterisk there. It's it's very much the case of whether he finds his feet and just starts doing things correctly. Because there's no question he has all the attributes. He has early speed, stamina, and he's massive two to three. Um, you know, he's looked a good bend runner, which you're going to need to be a toaster also. So he's one I'd certainly keep an eye on in the Kirby. Um, but as I said to a couple of lads earlier on, um, off, off air it's it's one of those competitions where it's easy to pick out the obvious ones in the Kirby it's the ones that are coming behind them that you have to keep an eye on the dogs that have coming out of the various unraced stakes we've seen the unraced stake at Clamel the rural Hawaii um, it was actually a dog called rural star that caught my eye in that he went out in the semi-finals he's running in the Kirby for Graham Holland he looks a really nice dog um, he's owned by the same connections that had rural Hawaii of course our Irish derby champion um, and then of course Tralee there was there's a dozen dogs that come out of Trillian and win a derby. There's no question about that. It's just a case of whether it'll come too soon for them or not. But, you know, it's all about who travels the toaster. Um, if we bring our big guns, you know, we're going to have a massively strong team. Again, it's a case of how they handle the track. And the problem is they're not going to be coming over for six weeks in advance of the derby and having four or five trials. You'll, you'll see a lot of people taking a chance with one trial, I would imagine. And that's a concern. Yeah, absolutely. David, have you got anything that might be going in that are a bigger price that you think we should be keeping an eye on? Um, at the moment, I'll be probably putting Troy Firebird in. Um, he, he's, he's done a good run around there already. Um, he's pretty much starting to come back to it before now. Um, he, had, he had a good campaign last year. Um, I've got another dog. Um, he's yet to win yet, but he's improving with each run. He'll just be coming up to two years old around the time, and that's Prince of Troy. Um, and as long as he keeps stepping forward, there's there's a chance he may go that way. Ian already mentioned Southwood. Well, you could paint. I'm just saying you could paint the stripes in Troy's Firebird at this stage because it looks like he'll get his draw every night, lads, won't it? Yeah, I'd have thought so. There'll be too many wide yeah. runners you'd have thought would there around there, but yeah. Yeah. the perceived wide runners can't win. I know they can do, but they just yeah, he yeah. thinks to go it, their way. Ian, what's your thoughts on Droopy's Curio? He, he's going to come over for the juvenile. He's already booked him for a trial uh, beginning of um, April. I think he would actually be quite well suited to Toaster. Strong running type that does the running late on. She is very Sorry. fast. Yeah. She's exceptional. She broke a track record in Newbridge in a racing debut. Um, her biggest problem is the first three strides. She can start, but she's probably going to miss it three nights out of five, which is a big concern. But two to three, she's massive, and she really stays to the line. She's exceptionally fast. She's as fast as any dog in the country last year. Problem is those first three or four strides you know she'd be just she'll arrive into the corner find traffic and 
But when she does trap level, you know, there's very few that can live with her. Always there seem to say you need a whoops jack type dog, a sort of smash breaker who cuts the bends round toaster for a wide runner who guarantee we sort of get trapped six. So if you try to find something like that, I remember you got to the semi final and you, uh, the last toaster derby just looked an ideal dog to run the track. I know it's slightly different now, but got to the final. He got to the final. Didn't, I apologise. Yeah, couldn't, yeah. couldn't, couldn't live with the wildcat though. In <laughs> yeah, <fairness>. No. <laughs> but that's yeah, people who say that's the sort yeah. of dog you might need. To. Ian mentioned Southwood Jet Lofty, who I think is a big price. It's uh, 50 to 1. There's one or two other English dogs in there at big prices. A lot of them, as you say, I mean, obviously with the derby being so close to last year's, we're basically going on last year's, you know, some of last year's derby. We had a few dogs who've been well backed. Um, Ritzy Flyer, who uh, here we know as Corinne Derrick, who was bought out of Yule. It seems that the sexy track the I found now, Yule, for the UK owners. Um, he's come over here, been, you know, purchased by Connections, and they've not been shy to punt him. Uh, I think what he did in Ireland, it seems a, a bit of a long shot, but, you know, they've, they've put their money down where their mouth is, and there's certainly been support for him. We've laid a few of the bigger prize ones. We laid Danid, funnily enough, after he, he won an A1 at Central Park, and having seen his uh, runs in the puppy races, he certainly ran exceptionally well in the, the puppy derby at Monmore, but does seem a bit of an awkward bend manner to me. I think he might need a few runs around Toaster to uh, to get used to that place. So I think he might be one that I'm not saying the money's safe there at the moment, but you know, the pup, Jaguar Macy, I mean, she's been absolutely in flying form. She's up in the Northern puppy derby at the moment at Newcastle, but a puppy bitch to win the derby, but she's got the early pace. She's a bang railer. She ticks lots of boxes in that way, but you know, we're ticking, at the moment we're looking for sort of, you know, bits and pieces. We're looking down the list for the English dog. So, Plenty of time to come yet, hopefully, anyway. It'd be amazing if a £675 dog could win uh, the derby. That would be a story. Uh, Nathan, for people, you know, wanting more English dogs in the betting, there is some good news in that there's going to be a, a big sale at Toaster, obviously, that you're running uh, for people to hopefully buy some derby dogs this side of the water. Yeah, we've, we've just got permission to uh, host our first sale on the 21st of April. Um, we're doing it at toaster um we are going to be doing a bit of a um a bonus as well which we should be releasing in the next few days um so if a dog goes on to win the derby that they'll get a few more quid in the pocket as well but uh, yeah hopefully we'll, we'll get lots of good dogs in there and um people can bid away it will be behind closed doors but everything like the trials and all the bidding will be online and what can we expect from toaster for the derby generally not so much on the track but off the track um, yeah, lots of plans. Um, you know, everything's very fluid at the moment because everything's changing with the government guidelines. Um, we, we're putting lots of plans in place. Uh, we, we, we're hopefully getting, first of all, actually on the track, we should be getting um, online trials up and operational for live streaming in um, beginning of April. So all the Derby trials will be online. So that'll, that'll please a lot of people. And um, sort of off course, we, you know, we're just making sure we've got plenty of facilities available. There'll be a couple of marquees on final night for people to book into. Um, to be fair, one's already sold out. So things are really starting to pick up sort of um, traction, really, and um, put some music on after racing. We're not quite sure on the act at the moment. We, uh, we're, we're looking whether to, to, to bring somebody in or just sort of stay local. We're not sure yet. Julia Singh, if you're stuck. No chance, no chance. On. <laughs> <laughs> David, what is the feeling amongst trainers uh, about the derby being at Toaster? Are you excited about it? Are you pleased it's at Toaster? Uh, there's a lot I like about Toaster. Um, there are other tracks that you could have thrown in the mix. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Central Park. I, I, I like Nottingham. Um, but one, one of the things I do love about Toaster is the, the parade. The long walk to the track which gets the dogs warmed up. There's too much to this short parades. Um, so the dogs are a lot flexible and the long walk off, um, which gives them time to warm down. Um, the way they do things there, you know, is great. Um, I think, I think it's, it ticks a lot of the boxes. You know, We're looking uh, forward to it very much. Yeah, I, think, I, mean, I think a lot of the trainers outside are looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to give you the last word, David, uh, the opportunity to wipe that smug smile off Ian Fortune's face. Can temp him win the derby? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we, we could all answer that. Of course you can. Yeah, <laughs> that's the final word. It can stay over here. You've had it the last two years. Enough is enough. We're back to Toaster 
it's going to come back our way hopefully listen that, that's just banter we can't wait to see all the great dogs in action and for those watching this don't forget you can see all the action on uh, star sports bet and on the app as well as well as uh, plenty of other greyhound racing streams on there now to so do check it out so guys thank you very much i'm sure i'll be chatting to you much more over the coming months but thanks for your time today mm -hmm.